chapter 5, the present Ruto William. What is your view about your situation and uh, your expectations beyond the, uh, the global institution and how to, to fix the situation in your country and, and, and the continent? Thank you very much, Macron, and thank you for daring to call us to this meeting. I'm told it was how dare you conference, but in any case, we are here. Let me just speak to this in two ways. Number one, um, I have had my sister Kristalina and um, Bangla, and we have excellent relations with the World Bank and IMF from Kenya. And these people have been incredibly of assistance, and we sincerely appreciate. But I am also aware that both Kristalina and uh, Bangla have a job to do, and they have people they report to, called shareholders, and they don't have the final word. The final word rests with somebody else. And that is why we are almost all of us speaking the same language, because we seem to be on the same corner. There are people who are not sitting here, yet they call the shots. Now, we have a situation, and I, let me speak from the perspective of Kenya, our continent in Africa, and the global south. We need emergency liquidity. We need debt relief. We need urgently new money, with urgency, with scale. That's our situation. How are we going to get that in the current situation? Um, listening to the terrorists this morning, we get development resources eight times more expensively than others. We, get, we have inadequate resources, and it takes forever to access it. So, how do we you know, find, how do we make meaning of this summit that my brother Emmanuel has put together? Our position is that if you want to get debt relief, emergency liquidity, and new money together, let us live here having agreed on one thing that like uh, Guterres has said, let's look for half of uh, 500 billion new money. But if we are going to distribute it the way we did SDR, we will end up with nothing. SDR, we ended up with 33 billion dollars in our continent of 1.2 billion people. Europe, with 450 uh, million people, ended up with five times what we got. You heard it this morning, not from me, from the UN uh, Secretary General, that we got 13 times less as Africans as compared to Europeans because the whole architecture, and by the way, it was fair by the architecture, the current architecture of the financial system. But it is grossly unfair when we are looking at fairness. So, what are we saying? Our position, good people, is we do the following. Let us agree that the money we are supposed to pay for the next 10 years as repayment of debt, let us convert it into a new loan that is 50-year loan with 20-year grace period so that you don't have a problem with your triple A rating. You can continue to have the triple A rating, but you don't have a problem with your shareholders because you haven't given away any money. We've just changed the structure, and we get both liquidity, we get it urgently, and we can develop our countries. For Kenya, for example, we pay 
10 billion dollars every year to service our debt. If I had 10 billion dollars every year for development in Kenya, instead of paying debt, it would make a huge difference. That's all yes, we are asking. We are saying, let, let's have something that is practical so that we live here, that next year, I don't have to pay $10 billion to pay debt. It will have been rescheduled. I will pay it 20 years from now. And I will have 30 years to pay, to pay that money. I will make that money available for roads, for health, for water, for education. It will make a hell lot of difference. We will have done something with this conference. We can discuss governance, we can discuss reform, we can discuss transformation of our multilateral development institutions. That will take time. We are talking about the debts that we already have. They have already been assessed. They have all the things, all the rigmaroles have gone through. That's why we, we already owe. So we are saying, let us take either 10, 15, 20 year debt that we would have paid for the next 20 years. Let's have that money to grow our economies. It will make a whole difference. Let us be deliberate about climate financing. Those are the two things I'm going to ask. Let's be deliberate about climate financing. Since we agreed in 2015 on emissions, that we reduce emissions by 45% by 2030 and net zero by 2050. Are we moving anywhere in that direction? No. What has happened? Since Paris 2015, developed countries, they have tried because they have resources. Europe has come down 20%. OECD countries have come down 12%. But what has happened in the rest of the world? Emissions have gone up 37%. Net, we've gone up the whole globe, we've gone up 17%. And last year, we spent $950 billion on fossil fuels. We only spent $500 billion on renewable energy. It means the journey towards net zero is not going forward, it's going in reverse. So what do we do? Because we have to agree on what to do. Our position is that there is a contest between national interest and global good. And in a contest between national interest and global good, national interest wins. Because we are politicians. Macron is a politician. And in politics, your constituency comes first. That is why we have not been able to get the 100 billion promised in Glasgow. Because every politician goes home and says, oh, you know, there's a global problem called climate change. We need to get money from you guys to go and sort out that problem. So the people of their country ask them, how is it our problem? A global issue? Why do we have to raise money to go and sort out that global issue? We run into trouble. So we need a new financing mechanism. We need a new financial, global financial institution. It is not possible, I dare say, to sort out a global problem using national institutions or institutions that are subject to uh, national interest or institutions that are subject to shareholder interest. How do we do it? Let me conclude. How do we do it? This is our proposal. There are already four proposals on the table. My good sister here, from the IMF and others have said we should explore the possibility of carbon price flow, right? They've said there's, there's not a proposal. 
25 US dollars for the least developed, 50 dollars per, 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 uh, per ton uh, on carbon, and 75. Assuming that we even agree, and by the way, we are ready from the global south, we are ready from the continent of Africa to pay our part. We do not want to be uh, given free lunch. We want to pay. Everybody should pay. Emitters should pay. Consumers should pay. The global south should pay. The global north should pay. Everybody should pay. If we go that direction, we should be able to raise, even if we use the $25 per ton of carbon, we should be raised, able to raise $870 billion every year.